Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the HDR bloom enhancements we've made from uh, iClone 7.2 as compared with previous versions. we got a lot of stuff to cover so I'll get right into it here. On the screen right now we have this uh, ugly looking frog belly. Now you can see the uh, belly belongs to this dude right here. He's like, what you're looking at? All right, so what we're going to talk about first is we're going to talk about the uh, the bloom enhancements that we've made uh, to that HDR bloom feature. Okay, so currently I'm in iClone 7.1, and this is comparing anything previous to 7.2 with uh, 7.0 or 7.1. Okay, so uh, we have this kind of medallion right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead over to Visuals, and I'm going to enable my HDR effect. Okay, this is what we're talking about in this tutorial. So the HDR effect is enabled, and you can see we have two values here. Two main values are brightness threshold and our bloom scale. Now the brightness threshold determines the areas that are highlighted. So if we kind of increase this, we're going to have a smaller area that becomes highlighted. Whereas if we decrease the brightness threshold, you'll see that more areas become highlighted. Okay, And you can uh, adjust the bloom scale uh, to become larger or smaller. It's actually adjusted this a little bit higher there. So you can see the brightness threshold becomes smaller and larger. So again, this determines the area to be highlighted. Whereas the bloom scale uh, determines the influence, the uh, influences the strength of the highlighted areas there. So you can have a stronger strength or a weaker strength there. Okay. Now, uh, one one improvement that we've made with uh, the major improvement we've made with the HDR bloom feature, uh, as you can see here with a seven point one and 7.0 we have this you know it's very very blurred uh, we have a nice you know HDR bloom but it's you know we can't really see much detail underneath the bloom it's kind of just washing out the detail on our medallion so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to uh, I'm going to close this down I'm going to open up 7.2 and do the same thing so we're going to go to the visual tab here HDR effect and let's do the same thing let's increase that bloom scale and take down that brightness threshold here and you can see we have now we have a lot more detail on the medallion. So we, we have the HDR bloom, but we have a lot more detail. We can actually see the kind of rivets and, and uh, crevices in the medallion there. Uh, we can take the brightness threshold up and uh, bloom scale I like to increase there. You know, we don't want it to be too washed up, but you can see we have a lot more flexibility uh, with that bloom scale here. Now, in addition to the uh, enhanced uh, effects for the bloom scale, we also have the ability to uh, uh, adjust our advanced bloom settings here. So let's kind of increase our bloom a little bit, maybe to about that point right there, and uh, maybe something like this, okay? Just so we get a nice, you know, uh, detailed reflection on our medallion there. And then we can go to advanced bloom settings here. So there's a whole bunch of different parameters here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parameters. And uh, they're basically very similar to the glow feature. We have, you know... Uh, the base area strength. Let's just take take all these down to zero right now. Okay. So what's going to happen is we're going to you know, gradually be decreasing this, and they kind of get further away from the actual source of the bloom as we go down the uh, down the line here. Okay. So the base area strength will be you know your base area. You can see right there. Okay. So the base is the, you know the sharpest kind of HDR bloom that we we have available, and then we have the smallest uh, spread strength. Okay. So a little bit further out from the actual source. And the extra small, a little bit further out, even further, and small strength. So you kind of get the pattern here uh, as we move along, as we move down the list here. They get further, the range gets further and further out from the original source here. So we can kind of, you know, create kind of a hazy look, especially if you use the extra large and, and largest spread strength. If we kind of increase those, we can get a much hazier look um, like this. But generally, you want to keep these fairly low. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just go back to default here. So this is the default value. And you can see the uh, the recommended kind of values right here. But of course, you can enhance these at any time. Now, keep in mind that you can't animate these. These are global parameters, and they're, they'll be uh, steady throughout the duration of your project. They'll be consistent um, throughout all the frames in your timeline, okay? So they cannot be animated. All right, so here's a quick side-by-side uh, -side comparison comparing uh, previous versions of iClone with iClone 7.2. And you can see the, the much stronger detail that we have with HDR Bloom as compared to previous versions. So this is a, a really nice enhancement that we've made uh, with 7.2 over previous versions. Okay, now to further demonstrate the advanced uh, bloom features that I mentioned before, I have another project shown here. This is a popcorn effects project. If I play back, you can see we have a nice uh, bokeh uh, particle effect emanating from our uh, popcorn effects dummy down here. All right, we don't have any HDR at the moment. Let's go ahead and activate that HDR effect right here. And let's just keep our original uh, values here. You can see we have a bit more of uh, the bloom going on in particular particles. You know, really, really quite nice effect. Let's go ahead and, you know, maybe take uh, take the bloom scale a little bit uh, further uh, down here in the brightness threshold, uh, a little bit further down. Let's kind of make it, you know, pump it right up there. Okay, so now we have some really strong effects right here. All right, 
And you can see it's much more magical and ethereal uh, at this point here, okay? Uh, maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit up there. Okay, I generally like to keep a value of maybe like around 20 to 80. Um, if you want to have, you know, quite nice, really nice shiny uh, HDR blooms, but uh, this will be kind of uh, fine the way it is, I think. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the advanced bloom settings. Let's go to, you know, some point here where we get a lot of uh, bloom stuff going on. Okay, let's just pause right here. All right, let's take a look at the advanced bloom settings when we have particles. All right, so we have, you know, stuff like the uh, the base area strength. Let's just take all these down to zero. Another quick example here. And uh, just to kind of demonstrate the range. So the base area will kind of be the sharpest uh, HDR bloom that we have. Okay, so you can kind of really uh, pump that up to get the base area going. And the smallest spread strength, extra small. Uh, you can see the values kind of... Uh, the range kind of increase and the values increase as we go down this line and pump up all these parameters. If you want to make it really dreamy, uh, I recommend emphasizing the largest and the extra large spread strength. You can make it really dreamy and almost uh, uh, like blurry type of uh, dream scenario. Okay, and if you want to make it sharper and more uh, more interesting, you can have uh, take these down a little bit and have them more vivid and, and sharp on your scene right there as well. And you can always go back to default as well. Here's a quick video to kind of show you uh, how each layer, each uh, parameter added onto each other kind of affects it. So we have the smallest spread strength kind of, you know, combining into the original uh, particle effects here. And then if we take the extra small spread strength and bring that on, you can see as we bring it on uh, over to our original image there, the range um, emanating from the original particle gradually, gradually increases. So we have these all set at maximum levels here. You can see medium spread strength and... Uh, large spread strength coming in so the large again a much larger area is affected with the large spread strength and then there's extra large here and almost like a, a vivid kind of dreamlike scenario and then our largest spread strength added on top of that boom there you go so that's just kind of a quick video to kind of demonstrate to you uh, how these different uh, you know parameters affect the particles and uh, HDR bloom in general just kind of a basic overview Okay, so for this final example, I'm going to talk about animating your HDR bloom. So what we have on the screen right now is a uh, beautiful uh, angel character with some, uh, we actually have a popcorn effects kind of uh, feather storm going on around her. She's floating up in the air like a goddess. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add some kind of glow effect to her wings. I'm going to show you how to animate that in combination with the HDR bloom. So what I'm going to do first of all is we're going to go to the visual tab here. and I'm going to turn off my HDR at first, okay? Uh, by the way, make sure you have your global illumination on over here. Enable global illumination in the viewport GI as well. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about how to animate the HDR bloom. So we're going to focus on her wings. So I'm going to go to the scene uh, tab over here. I can just press my Q hotkey and I can just select her wings from here as well. If I if it'll allow me to select it, there we go. All right, let's just kind of bring this over a little bit. And you can see the feather wings. There's uh, actually a couple of trapezoids uh, that are, the wings are actually, the parts of the wings are actually called trapezoids. So if I select one, I'll go over here to materials. You can see we have a uh, glow map under each one. So there's a glow channel right here. And you can adjust the uh, strength. If I select the glow map, you can see the strength can be uh, zero or you can take it up to 100, just like that. Okay, so... Uh, there's six parts, and each part has their own glow map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate these, and we're going to go first of all to uh, frame, uh, let's go to about frame 50 or so here. And I'm going to press F3 to go into the timeline. And make sure you have your object-related track selected here, by the way, when you select your items. It's much easier to do it this way. Okay, so we have our glow map. What I'm going to do is we're going to just uh, take our value to about uh, zero. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and take our strength up and down. It'll just add a keyframe there under the material track, under the texture tra uh, texture strength subtrack right there, a lot of keyframe there for zero. We'll just do the same thing for all the other uh, items here as well. So just uh, take the strength up and down. Da, 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 da. I'm just going to keep going through all these here. Just to kind of add a keyframe uh, to uh, indicate where we're going to start the glow. All right, so the glow is going to begin for frame, uh, frame 51. Okay, so let's go down to frame... Uh, as she's, you know, preparing to launch, we're going to kind of, you know, add some energy to her wings. So she's going to draw some energy into her wings here. So what we're going to do at uh, frame 80, we're going to increase our glow strength to about uh, a value of like 20 or so. Okay, so we'll just do the same thing for all of these. Pump it up to 20. All right, so all these various wing parts. It would be nicer if they were all in one part together, but uh, sometimes that's just the way it works. I'm not going to get the values exactly correct here because I don't really... 
care that much. Okay, they're pretty much the same anyways. So let's go ahead and just, you know, uh, as long as they're around 20, you know, we can see the, uh, the beginning of the fade, uh, beginning of the energize, energization of her wings. I'm not sure if that's a word or not, but let's go ahead and, uh, uh, go to a later frame here after she's finished launching and then let's take the glow down to, uh, to zero for our back down to maybe like 10 or something for all these. Okay. So we'll kind of, you know, peter it out a little bit. Uh, da, 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 just like that. Um, I'm just going to turn the value of 10 here, I guess, and also do that. <laughs> just to keep things consistent. Okay, 10. Oops. And one more. 10. Okay, so if we zoom out of our timeline, you can see now we have uh, three keyframes. The charge up right here, whoop, and then it gradually fades out as we move on to frame, you know, 200 or whatever it is there. All right, and then if we want, we can go to the, you know, this frame right here. We can see what the HDR, what it's going to look like. So visual, go to our visuals and uh, uh, add the HDR effect right there. So we see we get a little bit of a bloom scale, a little bit of a, a glow, and we're going to enhance that a little bit. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, particle effect, the popcorn effects particle effect that we have on this uh, scene here as well. Let's just uh, twirl down all this stuff, go down to our particles, and it's called Feather Storm. And you can see if you pay attention... There's a number of different feathers kind of floating in front of her like this, which is pretty cool. And you can see they have bloom on them as well. Now, let's close this down, uh, close on the timeline for now. Let's go to our popcorn effects tab over here. Now, keep in mind that you need to have the popcorn effects plugin if you want to uh, manipulate any of these parameters under the particle section here. If you don't have this, uh, if you don't have the plugin, you won't be able to, you know, adjust any of these parameters under the particle uh, section here. So just keep that in mind, all right? So there's there's also a, a, an embedded bloom, an embedded bloom in this particle effect. You can see exposed bloom right here, and we can adjust the strength from there as well if we want to, you know, have a higher or, or lower value right there. And keep in mind, this is global. This is not you cannot animate this throughout the scene. This is going to be, you know, consistent throughout all of your frames of your of your project. Okay, so let's kind of make that, you know, you can make it pretty high, you know. Uh, the idea here is to kind of try and find a, a balance, an ideal balance between your uh, the strength of your of your bloom on your particle effect and the, the bloom uh, from your iClone uh, HDR, uh, HDR iClone bloom there. Okay, if we want to enhance this or, you know, adjust this further, what we can do uh, to adjust the, the level of bloom uh, from the uh, particles here is we can go over here to uh, File, or rather Edit, sorry, and go to Project Settings. You can also use the Control, Shift, P, Hotkey, and down here there should be Glow Settings. Here we go. Uh, glow Settings right here. So you can see the uh, Glow Settings. Um, we can just take them all down to zero right now and just kind of show you um, the, the glow settings. We have this in a separate tutorial, but uh, you can see that we have the base glow right here. So take a look at the particles in particular. That's going to be the sharpest glow uh, for the base glow. And you can uh, add stuff onto it, make it blurry. And, you know, the larger spread strength will just kind of have a larger range from the original particle itself. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can balance these, uh, adjust these as long as you want. As much as you want, I'm going to kind of maybe increase the large spread spread strength a little bit just to make it a bit more of a dreamy uh, appearance like that. Okay, we'll in increase these larger ranges to make it seem a bit more dreamy. All right, we'll close that down for now. Just wanted to mention you can do that as well. Throw in the glow strength, uh, the global parameters for the glow strength there as well. Now, finally, let's animate our HDR bloom. So what I'm going to do here is uh, go to uh, frame one here. Let's press F3 once again to go into the timeline. And there'll be an HDR track here. You can see the HDR track under Project. And let's go to our visuals here. And this is where you're going to see the keyframe for your bloom scale. We're going to adjust the bloom scale here. So the first thing I'm going to do is when she's, you know, about to launch here, we're going to add a keyframe for this. We're going to take our bloom scale, uh, you know, just leave it at five. You can just double click in the, in the key, in the, in the timeline there as well to add a keyframe for that, uh, for that track. And then let's go over to, uh, you know, the frame when she's about to launch like this. And we're going to like pump that bloom scale all the way up, like, you know, make it like really, really wild and just kind of uh, make it, make it, you know, she's kind of gathering energy before she launches into her wings there. Okay. So then from here to here, we have that bloom scale, you know, kind of just increasing along with the, with the glow, increasing the glow there. All right. And then uh, maybe as we get to, you know, frame like this, somewhere down here, we'll just kind of cool it down a little bit. We'll decrease that bloom scale. Uh, so it's almost back to normal there. Okay. And so we've added, you know, three keyframes for our uh, our bloom scale. And you can see it increase from there to there and then decrease back down like that. All right. 
So uh, that's a really quick and easy example of how you can animate those together. You can also animate the brightness threshold as well. We'll just kind of keep that the way it is. Um, if you want to click and uh, quickly uh, toggle between keyframes, you can press the tab hotkey like this or a shift tab will take you backwards like this. So if we wanted to, you know, maybe uh, at this frame here, uh, maybe decrease the brightness threshold or increase it, you know, we can we can do that as well. I kind of like I, I kind of like this one to be really exaggerated because we're just, you know, focusing her energy in the wings. So we can take that brightness threshold down even further and then uh, we'll go from here to the next frame and, you know, take it back down to 80. All right, so that's pretty much it. All right, so we've animated the HDR bloom along with our glow maps for the wings. Whoosh, you can see there we have that nice soft launch and we have the nice feather storm in front of her with the, uh, the bloom from the uh, popcorn effects particle effect. All right, so that's really all there is to it, guys. Again, you want to avoid overexposure as much as you can. Uh, you know, I kind of went a little bit exaggerated on the launch there. You kind of, kind of overexposed her face there, but, uh, I wanted that exaggerated feeling uh, as she's launching uh, gracefully into the sky there. So uh, yeah, that's the uh, tutorial for our uh, HDR bloom enhancements and how you can use them to animate and stuff. Uh, so thanks so much for watching and hopefully you learned a lot. And as always, make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.